Hey peeps, Dee here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this little class making a flower pendant. Now the one we're going to make is actually this guy. Okay, and I'll, we'll talk about this one too. So I like it. It's kind of a big thing, kind of a big pin, but uh, we'll talk about possible things you can do with it even if you don't want to wear it at the end of class. So, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think it's time for us to begin. Let's do it. Now this is the flower we're going to make. And what I want you to know about this is that we're going to use a technique called color replacement. All right, we're taking two Skinner blends and we're going to be replacing the colors from each one into the other. And that's how we get this arrangement. It's just a simple polka dot. You can make it much more complicated, but I decided to keep it simple, just a polka dot. All you need is a cutter, basically. Donk like that. Now, if that's too complicated for you, that's really no problem. Because you can just as easily take what we call a bullseye cane. That is, in this instance, a red core with a black wrap around. Then you take it and you reshape it into a petal shape like that. And then you cut slices and then you get your individual petals that way. So it can be this simple, this simple. It could even be simpler. It could just be one color. You don't need the black around the edge. I happen to like the black around the edge and that's why I do it that way with the bullseye cane. Now, for those of you who cane, now maybe you have a little more experience you can also use something like this, which is a Skinner Blend Starry Night Cane, okay? So you'll, you'll recognize it if you've done this particular cane. Here's another one, canes, cane, there's a cane. And this is the French Lavender Cane, and I just cut slices off of the block, cut the pieces out, and it formed the flower. I'm going to show you how to do formation of the flower here. But I'm just showing you these to show you that you have other options available to you when you learn how to make these flowers. Okay, so now it really is time to get started. So these are the colors I'm going to use. I took a cruise through my color box and this is what I found. I'm going to mix all of this together. It's going to blend to this berry. Then I grabbed this nice hunk of pale turquoise. I picked up these two. I'm going to mix them together. So I'll blend this to this, this to this. All right. The first thing I have to do is mix the colors, which means I have to mix these together and these together and roll these out into sheets. I'll be back. Here are my colors. Now, these two blended together and then these two. Do you know what? I am going to try to do these at the same time, okay? Yeah, it occurred to me that perhaps I didn't need to do them separately. And it's not like I'm making so much, right? I'm not making so much of this blend. So what I'm doing is folding them in half like this. As you guys, if you've watched me, you know that I am very much about saving time and effort when I can. Can't always do it, but... Now in your traditional Skinner blend, I've been folding corner to corner, cutting across uh, to make the right angle, right? creates a right angle. This time I'm going to cut, this is the right angle. So I'm just going to cut straight across the bottom. Let's separate our colors. Yeah, let's save some time. And probably some effort. 
now I will cut this like so, separate again. And I'm not using like all the clay. The way I do my traditional Skinner blends, I use pretty much all the clay. This time, not so much. I don't need a huge Skinner blend. Now let's take this apart, put that guy there. Put this guy here, like so. Now let's put this on the back of this like that and this this way so I can do my Skinner blends at the same time. Okay, first time this goes on the, this edge on the rollers or this edge, this or this. Okay, now let's fold this and fold it back right along that center line. And sometimes the ends get splayed out a little. So I'm just going to try my best to keep them straight like that. Fold on the rollers, roll through. And keep doing that, line it up, pull it over, pull it over. Fold on the rollers and roll through. <laughs> All right, and I will continue doing that, lining up the center, pulling any stray edges that have splayed out back into alignment fold on the rollers and roll through, and I'll be back when I'm done. So here are my two blends. Now let's separate them. That was a lot faster. It was a lot faster. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut right there at the division, like so. Now each one of these is going to be rolled up because I'm going to plug it and make it shorter. Okay, this one too. And I want to do these separately because the act of making the plug kind of distorts everything inside so that this edge might find its way wandering up into the clay. So it's not as clean at this point. It's better to do two, like so. Now, how tall should they be? I'll tell you something. I'm getting my cutters. I've been making them using this wonderful cutter that was given to me by Scott, but it's a little bit big. So I think I'm gonna try to reduce the size slightly, and I'm going to use a cutter that I really, really like, if I can find it. I really like this cutter a lot. See the shape? I like it. So it is shorter, actually, and it is, you see, it's shorter, and it has these blunt ends, so I'll use this. So what I need essentially is to squish this down until it is probably just a bit larger, a bit taller than the cutter. So let me work on that, make my plug like so. Okay, so you can see that. And 
and let us repeat the same thing. Now, I'm not too concerned about this at the bottom because I don't believe I'll be cutting in that area. So, okay. Like that, okay. Kind of like that. All right, so I'm going to actually squish this down even more so that I can fold it and roll it a few times through the pasta machine. Of course, every time I fold and roll, it gets a little wider, right? So that's why I'm really pushing it down. Or push it down, push it down, push it down. Now, let's take this guy and squish, turning my plug into a strip. I've done this before, haven't we? Keep it nice and narrow. Don't let it take control of you. You will always control it. short the blend is that's what we want if you have done this and you find that one color is here and the other color is here and it blends across you have stretched it in it in the wrong direction so you have to make it short again you have to bring it back to this shape and then try again all right so let us roll this through the pasta machine i'm still set on the thickest setting like so and I'm gonna roll through a few times to improve the blend. Okay. Alrighty. As usual, fold on the rollers when you're rolling through. So here's basically, there's one. Let me repeat with this guy and then I'll be back. All right, so here they are. I'm gonna roll each of these through setting number three. There's one. And we're going to do color replacement. Now, I think that this is actually a little bit thicker than I want. So I'm going to roll this through setting number four. I'm going to be backing each of the petals with black, I believe. Oh, schmutz from under my machine. Schmutz. Okay. So let me roll this guy through four as well. like so. Now to make things a little bit simpler, I think we'll stick with just an ordinary simple polka dot. You know, you can actually cut any shape you'd like. Now I'm going to need 12 petals. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, let's just say here. Okay, so this is how much I am going to polka dot. And then these will be placed, these will be set aside like so. Okay. Okay. 
So let's start by just mapping out a few lines. Um, you know, normally I think I just kind of let fly, but sometimes a little planning is a good idea. What do you think? Just a bit of a plan. Hmm. I have all my rollers and once again, I can't find a ruler. I mean, I'm finding rulers, but not finding the ones I want. I'll be back. Okay, so I found my ruler. First thing I'm gonna do is just cut a straight edge along the bottom. You can see I've arranged these so that they're side by side, right? So I'm going to start half inch from what is the bottom. Uh, and then, you know, it's not going to be like a lot of dots. Actually, let's just make this three eighths. Three eighths. I'm going to use this round cutter. Okay, so I'm going to lightly scribe across like that and like that. So that'll be our beginning point. Get off. And then let me just move it up three eighths of an inch actually. It's easier to measure from the bottom. Another, so that was three, six, nine, nine eighths. All right, so now I've got my three very pale lines and we can start cutting. And they won't be exact because they never are. <laughs> I do my best, but uh, let me take this guy. And they should be rather close, right? Okay, so I'll stop there. I'm going to have to go across the whole row, but I don't think you have to watch me do it. Okay, so let us start here. Now this guy gets turned over, popped into here. This guy will get popped into here, and likewise these will then get put in the holes in the other sheet. Now you'll note that I'm turning them over. One side has the actual incised line. Well, that will go down. Okay, so I'll show you here. Here's this one. You can see that line. Well, I'm gonna turn it over and put it in the hole so that the sharp meets the dull. The sharp part of the cut made with a cutter meets the dull. Okay, that's why you're going to turn it over. Turn it over, put it in. Turn it over, put it in. Okay, so let me finish. I'll do this row. Then I will do the second row by offsetting like that.
like that. And then the third row, we go back to this arrangement, like so. Okay, so I'll be back when I'm done with that. All right, so here we go. I am going to take another piece of paper, put it down, and burnish. Okay, now there is a fold there, so I'll probably have to avoid that. <laughs> it's clay everywhere. Okay, so let's just burnish. I'm trying to get all those little dots to merge with the background. I can make two flowers. I can make a blue background, and then I can make the orangey berry background too. Yeah, good. All right, so I'm concentrating on the one on the right. Done this before. If you see white like this, white between, that means there's air. So you just take your finger or something, and you just really apply your energy at that point, okay? There we go. That looks good. Let's peel it back and take a look. Yep, looks good. I'll give it a couple more, just a few more, like so, and I will do this one. Of course, this little guy, right there at the fold, I've got to move the paper, reposition the paper so I don't burnish a fold in. Right. Okay. Very good. Now let me do the other one. I'll be back. All right, so the second one's done. Now, the paper's really important. I've talked about this before. You cannot accomplish this without the paper. Well, you can, but the dots will probably not be round. Would be round. The paper is like holding all the clay in there and preventing it from getting thin and preventing the dots from getting distorted. So the paper is very important. I call it a dam. Oh, I see space. If you see a space, just put the paper back down and rub where you need to. Okay. Let's do this one more time along that edge. I saw a few that were not as good as they could be. Now, I'm glad I thinned the sheet before. Three would have been too thick. Too thick. Okay. Now, you're going to have to do the back. Yep, you have to do the back. Okay, just make sure, because you did such a good job on the other side, you don't have to do quite so much on the back, but just double check. Now, let's loosen it. You always peel the paper from the clay, not the clay from the paper. You can hold it down like I'm doing here. Okay. Well, let's start at this end. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, good deal. I'm gonna pick 
this guy up. Place it down like that. Pick this one up. Place it down next to it, more or less. And now I'm going to texture. Now you guys know I like to roll it through the pasta machine together, but if I do that, the dots are going to get distorted. Yeah, they will. So I have to do this manually, in other words, by hand. Yes, let me see. Okay. Not so bad. I'm just uh, 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 like this. Now I'm going to back this whole sheet with black clay. I suppose I could have done it now, but I didn't. I may wish I had done so, but This means I have to peel more paper away from more clay. Not that big a deal. Okay, off we go. This is that dual plex stuff. Refrigerator liners. You get it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. It's made to keep your veggies fresh, but it's really a good texture. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Now I'm going to roll this hunk of scrap clay that I put blackout clay into to make it almost black. And I'm gonna roll this very thin, probably six, maybe even seven. Okay, so I rolled this sheet to setting number seven. And let us just peel this up, put it down. Okay, do the same thing with this side. Like so. And now the back of the petals will be black. And I've added a little bit more durability to the petals as well without adding a heck of a lot of thickness. I didn't want to make it too thick. Okay, so let's cut this guy too. Okay. All right, so what color shall we make the flower? Da, da, da. They're both tall enough. Should I make it blue or berry? Blue berry. I like the berry better than the blue. I'm not sure though, either one. I guess I just have to start. All right, let's do the blue. The blue is actually a little bit taller. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so here we go. I need 12. <laughs> and I don't really think too much about the pattern itself. Just that. I'm just gonna poke it out of the base. So there's one petal. Two, and they do stick inside. So what I'm gonna do, see this, the dark part, that's what's going to be the base. That's the base of the petal. So I will just push it out at the base, not the tip. Okay. Oh, 
All right, so let me continue cutting, and when I've got 12, I'll be back. Okay, so the next step is to start constructing the actual flower. Now I've taken my almost black clay and I've rolled it through setting number three. I'm just going to put it right on there. Now this flower is smaller than I've been making. Yeah, my flowers, <laughs> I think you guys said, yeah, well you did, big, big flower. You know what? I might be making another big flower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the base. Ta-ta. Now, I am going to take this one, also rolled through the same setting, number three. I am going to cut a hole. And put this piece on top of this piece. Now, for my particular flower, I'm using the smallest cutter in my um, metal Atiko set. I could use the, you know what? I have changed my mind. I've changed my, I'm moving up one. Okay, it's going to be just a little bigger. Like so. Okay. Alrighty, now let's take the next size. Do I want the next size or do I want this size? This is the size after. See, I'm just grabbing from my cutter set. So let's just take the one that's actually, I'm skipping one setting. Let's see how big this guy is after cutting through both. Is this the base I want? You know, I think it is the base I want. So I use the second and the fourth cutters. Now, this just depends. I mean, you have some latitude here. The goal for me is not to have any of this black, the black base underneath sticking out between the petals. Okay, so it's got to be big enough, but it has to be small enough, if you know what I mean. So for your particular petals, you might find yourself experimenting a little bit with the sizes that you choose. Now, the one of the nice things about making it a little bit larger underneath is that the petals have a little more support in the middle. I'll show you. Okay, so let us grab a petal, and you know, I find that it's helpful to put just a, just like that down the middle. Okay, and then loosen it up, and then do a little bit of a fold here. And if you want, you can even do a fold at this end, which would make my petal a, a bit pointed. I think I'm going to leave it blunt. Now this will be attached right here at the edge. Okay. Now this arrangement is a little bit different than what I've been doing because what I've been doing is putting six down and then offsetting and putting six on top. And that's what fills up the space. This time I'm going to try to do side by side. Okay. And I think I can do it, well, I mean, somehow I would work it out, but these petals are thinner. You see, they're just a different shape. They're not quite as wide. As the other petals that I've been using. So let me continue doing this. It's the same process, just putting that center vein in each petal like this. 
If you don't have a, a big doll needle, perhaps you have a very, very fine knitting needle, or uh, you could use a, uh, of course, something like this, which is a, a needle tool. Okay, so let me just work and try to get them all around. Now, at that point, we'll have other decisions to make because I may want to make it smaller. Well, what do we do then? We'll see when we get there. Okay, so here is what I have now, and this is with all 12. Now, I could make it smaller, right, by just removing some, moving this in like so, right? So that would reduce the size, the overall size of the flower. But as you can clearly see, now the base is too big. <laughs> and the petals are also not quite as full or as packed together as I think you would like. So I think we stick with 12 so that we get that fullness. Okay, now the other way to get the fullness is, of course, doing something like this where we would have maybe eight petals on the bottom and then another eight on top. That gives you two layers, but it fills in the gaps and creates that fullness in the flower, right? But if you're going to do something that's flat like this and round with only one layer, then you have to be conscious of, more conscious of those spaces in between. And that's why, you know, it was actually kind of simpler to make two uh, two layers of petals because definitely two layers of petals fill all those spaces that you want to conceal between them. All right, I think I can do it this way though. However, I may want to cut that outer ring a bit smaller. Yeah, I'll fit these two in. Okay, so as long as you don't push it down, you can play with the arrangement of them. So let's take all of these out. Let me reduce the overall size by using a smaller cutter like this. And as long as I have the two rings with the one lower plane and then the, the second ring on top, I'm in good shape. Okay, so let's do something like this. I find that having the second ring makes the flower a stand up a little bit, not quite so flat. Okay, so there we go. Something like that. All right, now I'm gonna secure these by just taking something like this or a something like maybe like a ball stylus like this and just push it down. That's good. And I kind of like the way the petals are standing up a little more. Now you can manipulate them, play with them a bit. You can make them 
curve quite a bit more, like something like this. You can have them turn like that. You know, so you can play with them a bit. And because they're a little bit thicker, if they were too thin, you couldn't do that. It would just collapse. I like the polka dot flowers, very cheerful. And now we are ready to deal with the center. What are we gonna do? I'll be back. Okay, so the centers of the flowers that I've been making have this black fuzzy stuff and then this gold disc and then a crystal in the middle. I like this. Every single flower I've made is like this. I'm not saying that's correct. You could use any color you want. Sunflowers, you know, they have yellow. The fuzzy stuff is yellow. The center is yellow. But for me, I make them all black. Poppies are black in the middle like that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use black. Now, I have rolled this through setting number five on my pasta machine. Five. You know what? I think I'll roll it through six. Am I nuts? Maybe. Maybe. Now, these centers are much smaller than the center I'm going to make. So I'm going to make several of these. See, I've got two, one, two. Maybe I'll make three. So I want to pick one that's this big, and this big, and this big. Okay, I'm going to make three of these. So let's start with the largest one. I'm working on deli paper. Just going to take a cut out like that. Set that aside. Now I'm going to cut, make four slits, not all the way to the middle. North, south. I'm leaving a space in the middle like that okay now each of these spaces between the originals will have cuts like that divide it in half divide the half in half divide the half in half like so now i suppose i could make more slits because this is the outermost ring and it is the largest you know, I could, uh, but I think I'll stick with what I'm doing now. It's what I've been doing. I'm stuffed up today. All right, so I'm going to cut from that point, you know, the end of the cut to the middle of the space in between. I'll show you. The, to the middle. See? Now, the adjacent slit. I start at the tip of the slit and then I go to the middle. Then I do the same thing. Slit to the middle, then to the middle, and then all of these get removed. And that leaves us with this very spiky kind of thing happening, okay? Like that. Once you start doing this, you, you don't have to think too much about it. And I will say it's a little hard to make what I would say is a real mistake. Like so. And then all these triangle shaped pieces get pulled out like that. Okay, so now I will repeat this with two smaller circles. Okay. 
of clay. There we go. So that was this guy. Now I will do this guy and then this guy. I'll be back. All right, so I cut them. Now, what I need to do is apply cornstarch just to the spiky bits, not the center, just the spiky bits around the perimeter. Just these, okay, so they don't stick together. I want the center sticky, but not these guys, okay. Just like that. Okay, so let me do all of them because they're going to be stacked. Now, I may find that I have to cut maybe another big one. The little ones might not fill the space adequately. So we'll see. I'll do what I have to do. But at this point, I am thinking that the... This little guy is too little, just a bit too little. So let me start by taking the middle one and just kind of forming it around a large ball stylus, okay? Now these ball styluses I got from, of all places, Timu. Now let's put it right there in the middle. Just gonna rotate to loosen the ball not coming up. Ah, let me pull the whole thing up. Let me just get everything together like this and see how that goes. Okay. All right. So that's how much it fills up. Now, I think, you know what? I need one larger than the largest one. I need to make one this size. So I'm gonna make one this size and that will go underneath these two. Okay. I can separate them. Like so. Yeah, definitely, I need a big one like this. So let me make that roll through the same setting of the pasta machine, number five. So I will make that and I will be back. This one will go underneath these guys. Okay, here it is. Once again, I need a little bit of cornstarch. So the little spiky things don't stick together. All right. Ta -ta. I'll just plop this puppy right in there. Hmm. Okay. I'll plop you right down in that. Depression. Well, let's let's curl you a bit. Is you're so like straight like that. And you know what? You look better if you got a little fold there and a little push up there. Maybe push you back that way. This guy goes up. These guys go together. Hmm. Okay, so. Hmm. That looks better. It just looks so flat. <laughs> it was just flat. Okay, let's put these guys in there. I think the small one's too small. Okay, so the center 
this a bit larger. Now we can kind of arrange these guys. You see anything you want to do with them particularly? Because they're not all stuck together. You can move them. Like so. Look a little more lively, I think. Which is what we want. We don't want some flat looking things just sitting there. Okay, so I think that looks good. All right, so the center, uh-huh, the center. Shall I depart from what I've been doing? No, of course not. Where are my thingies? Oh, here they are. My uh, thingies. My thingamajingies. Okay. All my gold stuff. Black clay. I'm going to roll it into a ball. Let's see what I've got here. I've got that big boy. This one's way big. Is that one in between? Yeah, there I have one in between. Then I have tiny ones. Teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Now, I also have these. These guys. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. Decisions, decisions. What am I going to do? What am I going to... I like this flower. <laughs> yeah. And I get to make another one. Yay, me. Okay, this is too big. I just feel it. Drop that baby there. It seems still too big to me. leave that flat I can just drop that guy on top pull these guys over talking to my clay again something like that what can I get the bigger one in I can but what am I gonna fill it with okay so I have some pretty darn huge crystals here I do. Oh, that one's too big. Uh-oh, how am I stuck with... Uh, I, have a, I have massive ones, and then I have not-so-massive ones. What happens with that guy? What happens with this guy? Da, 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 da. Well... The black shows, more black shows than ordinarily would show, but is that such a terrible thing? I, you know, I don't think so, but as long as I'm here, what happens if I take this guy, which is clearly too big for the center like that? It's big. It's big. But then I plop that guy in the middle. Sorry. Sorry, little pokey things. Yeah, I know. Like, move over. Hmm. 
you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. That's where we are. You know why I'm going to do it? Because I can. Yes, I can. <sighs> First, liquid clay. First, liquid clay. See all this white, dusty stuff? Well, that's just the, um, oh, that's not good. Uh, that can just be brushed off after it's cured. Okay, so I'm not worried about that white, dusty stuff. That's just the cornstarch. Okay, did I, am I crushing anyone here? Oh, uh, let's see. I can't do that with my finger. My fingers are too big. That's not big enough. Okay, perfect. Okay. Right. All right. Oh, so cute. Okay, more liquid. More liquid in here. Enough so that I would really like the liquid to come up over the sides of the crystal. Ooh. Wish me luck. feels pretty good. I don't have a heck of a lot of liquid around the crystal though, so I'm going to try to give that a go just with my needle tool because, you know, it will cure clear. Maybe I can just scoot it around like so, and then clean off the top with a Q-tip. But in the meantime, I will have built up a little bit of liquid around like so. I do not see why that won't work. Q-tip. These are the world's cheapest Q-tips. They're a plastic stick with like nothing on the end. <laughs> I suppose I could invest in the real deal. Huh. All right, so I think that's good because, as I said, the liquid will cure clear and you won't really see it, but it will hold it in. Now, one last time, go around, look at the little, little black things, see if they're the way you want them. If you want to curl them up a little more, that one's a little bit doesn't have much personality. Not much movement there. Come on. You can do it. Okay. Okie dokie. This is going in the... This is a cute one. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Turned out to be a lot bigger than I wanted. It's like... It's the biggest one of all. Mm -hmm. Okay, going in the oven. So this one is out of the oven. And it's time to put the backing on. The tie tack. Now see, if you have any of that cornstarch, you just take a soft brush and just brush it off. Like that. I did make another one. This one's still warm. And if you look, you can see the difference. First of all, this one's smaller, right? Yeah. Well, this was made using the two rows instead of one row of uh, 12 petals. Is this 12? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 12. 12 petals. 
and this one has two rows, six and then six. Okay. Then the center of this one, I actually cut with the same cutter. I believe it was this one, two of these. So I did not cut a large, a medium, etc. but two of the same size to make this one. Okay. It is time to put the tie tack on the back. So let's do that. I've got my tie tack. I have my glue somewhere. Where are you? Oh, here it is. Pulled it out before. Hmm. Okay, so let me put, let me splish some glue out on there. Now I'm using my Loctite glue. I'll show you the container. Now I'm just going to push this down and hold it for just a few moments so that you're actually gluing the tie tack to the back of the clay, not to the glue. You can do that, you know. All right, so let's let that sit for a moment. I'll show you. This glue was in this container. I've talked about this before, but maybe you didn't hear. Um, when you get to the point where you keep squeezing and squeezing and nothing comes out, don't throw it away. Take a hammer, break that off, take all this off because inside you have a tube of glue. It's this glue. And there is a lot of glue left in this tube, okay? I, I cannot tell you how much glue I have thrown away because I didn't really realize that by the time you, you can squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, you've still got a lot of glue left in there. So just take a hammer, wham, crack the casing of this open and, and uh, you're going to have a lot of glue left. This is so much, I can't believe how much glue is in here. I've been using this for a long time. Okay. That's my story. Hmm. Now, this has been rolled through setting number four. I am going to texture it by rolling it through setting number four with this sponge. This is the sponge I used for black clay. Okay. All right, so let's take a cutter that's larger than this one and cut one out like so. Now I'm gonna take liquid clay and I am just going to apply it to the back like so. Now you could also use poly paste, but poly paste is more expensive. So why use the more expensive product? Just use liquid clay, it does the same thing. In this instance, they, you don't need poly paste. Okay, now I'm gonna take this and just push it over the tie tack like so. And I'm gonna take my craft knife. I do have scalpels around here somewhere, but this craft knife is fine. I think I got this from Timu. It was really cheap. I know some of you are probably like, I can't believe she orders from Timu. You know, it is my opinion. And okay, it's only an opinion. But I think half of what you buy on Amazon is from Timu. Okay, so I put a little bit too much liquid on. You know how I know? Because it's slightly sliding and you don't want that. So don't use too much liquid. Otherwise, your clay starts slipping. Okay, I need my signature canes. Oh, 
Behind me is my computer and my box of signature cake. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna cut one. And doink. Now, when I cure this, I have a pan with baking soda in it. So what I do is I just go like this, right in the baking soda. So I'm going to cure this and I will put it back on this and I'll be back. All right, peeps, here we are at the end. This is the flour out of the oven. Boom, ready to be attached to something. Maybe a big fluffy sweater. If you don't like like big fluffy sweaters or you don't like particularly large flowers to wear, then what can you do with them? I'll show you. I went through a phase when I was making tote bags. I was making tote bags and purses. I love to sew. I think this would look great on a tote bag. Why not? Why not? Especially when you have one that's kind of plain like this one. I made this one, it's just black and white cotton duck something and I lined it with this Hawaiian fabric, but I think it's really cute, just something like that. Here's another one. I made these little purses. I found this great Japanese fabric and I started making purses. I made so many of these, I gave so many away. I even sold some with a piece of jewelry on them, but look how cute this is. I think that's adorable. I'm gonna leave this one on and this will be my like, going out occasionally, which I never do, bag. Okay, I'll hang it up on my wall. That's where I'll sit. It'll hang up on the great wall of all the stuff I've made for the channel. <laughs> Here is another one, and here's another bag. This is called an origami bag. It's actually like a market bag, and it is huge. You could fit a small child in it. But look, it's got a nice flower right here. Cool. So you don't necessarily have to wear it. You can slap it on something like a, a tote bag or a little purse or, you know, anything. All right, here's something else. Leftover petals can quite easily turn into nifty little earrings. Yeah, these are the leftover petals from this flower. As a matter of fact, you might just wanna make earrings <laughs> if you don't wanna make flowers. Yeah, well, it's an option, it's an option. There you go. All right. So I want to thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And um, hmm, I guess that's all for this class. So I'm Donna Cato signing off. Bye.